Hey, this is Mikey, and I want to talk about a cool piece of gear called Pallet Gear. Now, I've been using this Pallet Gear for the last few weeks, and I wanted to talk to you about um, how I use it and some of the things that I have it set up for, specifically for video editing with Premiere Pro and After Effects. What Pallet Gear is, is it's a module control system um, that you can magnet together. These are very cool, very modern feel, nice clicky buttons and uh, beautiful sliders. And as you can see, they're all made out of aluminum and they just magnet and snap together. Now, what I've been using is, of course, this core product. That's the brain that makes everything work and then everything magnets to it. I've got two buttons, two dials, and two sliders. Now, is this the ideal setup for me? Uh, not quite. I actually wish I had another couple of buttons um, I really find the buttons are my favorite. Um, they are the most useful. You can do the most with them, I believe. So as you browse through this website, you can see they've got different uh, kits. Starter kit, expert, and then you can also do the add-ons and go in and just add on. So if I wanted to get a couple more buttons, I can easily and I don't have to uh, get a whole kit. Now let me show you the Palette Gear program. Now you can download this program, but you really can't see what it does unless you have the hardware because it needs to be plugged in for in order for it to work. So what I have here is I have a After Effects profile and a Premiere profile. And you can see that as I take these and take them off and put them back on again, it adjusts what the way the profile looks. This is, and it shows exactly the way I have it look here as I do on the computer. And as I zoom in close, you're going to see I switch from profile to profile. It changes the logo that's on the little screen. Pretty cool. And you can also see the colors around changing. I can change these colors. You can see right here, I got that set to red. Well, if I went in there and changed it to purple, well then that's going to change the light. So let me talk about how I have them set up. And again, I said I like the buttons the best. Um, then I like the dials and the faders I don't like as much just because they don't uh, work well with what I'm doing with video. Um, that's more of an audio thing. So let's start with Premiere Pro. So as I come into Premiere Pro, you can see first off the bat that you can't use the faders at all they don't work with Premiere. They don't have any functions for them available yet, so that's kind of a bummer. So right now I've got two of these modules that just doesn't work with Premiere Pro. But what I have now is some of just my most used things. So Control-B is what I use to disable clips, and what I did is I set that up as a keyboard shortcut. But there's also other things available here. So I can start and stop playback, which is just your spacebar, render options, set endpoints, undo, redo, razor all tracks, and then you can set up any keyboard shortcut or palette functions. And what this palette functions is, is I can set this up to go to the next tab. So these are the tabs up here. So if I have more than one profile for, say, Premiere, I can switch between them. But I go into keyboard shortcut, and then I can just set what shortcut I want. Um, for this one, again, I want Control-B, because that's the shortcut I have set up to disable tracks or enable tracks, and I use that a lot when I'm editing. Click Done, and there we go. And then this next one, I did the same thing, keyboard shortcut for Command L, which is what I use to unlink tracks. Um, so if I want to unlink the video and the audio together, um, that's what I did. This next one down here, this is a dial, and what I did was I set the current time indi uh, indicator. So where it is at, you know, the little line that shows you where it's at. Or you can set keyboard shortcuts. But with this one, I just have the current time index. And then on the bottom one, what I did was a keyboard shortcut. So right turn was the keyboard right. Uh, left turn was key left. And then the action is the V, which is I have set that up as a razor all tracks. Um, or an add edit to right where your indicator is. So that's where I can do that. And let me show you how this works inside of Premiere. So here I am in Premiere, and I'm gonna try to film two things at once. So what I can do is, first off, as I move this dial, it's going to quickly scrub through my indicator, my current time. 
Now, if I want to get in there smaller, that's why I have this other dial as the left and right. And as you can see here, as I go through this, it's going just one frame at a time. And say to the point where I like that, then I can press this as a button and it creates an edit there. Okay, pretty cool. Now, say I want to disable this top track, but I've got them linked together. So if I right now hit this button, it's going to disable both the top and the bottom, right? But if I then click this button, the second button, that's my unlink, it's going to unlink them and I can then re-enable that bottom track. So I still have the audio to it. So those are just some of my most used functions I use in Premiere. And again, I have it, you can see here, just up to the top left of my keyboard. So, cause I use keyboard shortcuts a lot and then this just adds a little bit more to it. Um, so I can have my hand here, use the keyboard, do a little bit more here. And then my right hand is over on my mouse. Very common setup. Um, but having, having this palette gear head here just adds a little bit more to it. Let's head over to After Effects. And what I have the sliders set to right now is opacity and volume. Because um, that's really the only things they can do. Again, the sliders aren't, uh, the faders aren't as functional as the other ones. So if I want to mute, mute my audio, I can do that really quickly. And this will just mute whatever I have selected. So again, I need to have something selected in the timeline. And that'll mute that. And then this one is my opacity. So those are really the only two functions for the faders in After Effects. Again, a little bit disappointed. I wish there was more functionality, but right now um, that's about all they can do. Okay, now the next is these dials, and they're pretty handy. Um, this top dial, I can zoom in onto my composition. And the bottom dial, as you can see, I'm moving frame by frame. So if I need to get into an animation, just move it, you know, just see next frame, I can move frame by frame, and then I hit the button, and it moves back home. And then these buttons right here, this top one, I've only got one layer, but let me put it in another layer so you can see what that does. It solos the layer. So as I have that bottom layer selected, solo it, or I can select that top layer, solo it. And then the second button I have it is, is it'll create keyframes and it'll create a keyframe on whatever you're on. So if I just grab this, move the position, I can create keyframes. Let me uh, show my keyframes down here, move it creates a keyframe. Now if I were to rotate this, see now my rotation is selected and then when I hit this button, creates a keyframe. So that's how I have it set up for After Effects. Now the question is, is, is this something that is right for you? I kind of showed you how I have it set up and I think this is a really good deal. There's lots of control surfaces out there that cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and this is quite a uh, good deal and plus you can just because you can build up however you want it um, by adding on the extra modules well, you know for me it's it's a pretty good deal now the now the question you need to ask yourself is this something you're going to be using or are you comfortable enough using keyboard shortcuts and if this is something you feel like would really increase your workflow and your productivity then I would say go do it. Go check out Palette Gear. Again, they're good prices. I've had a lot of fun using them, and it's really nice to have that tactile feedback to be able to actually hit a button, to move a fader, to twist a dial, and that's something you don't get with just a mouse and a keyboard. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, again, put them down in the comments below. If they're specifically about Palette Gear, please let me know. Um, if you say, hey, can it do this? Um, you know, I can look into it and see how I can make it work with um, After Effects Premiere. So thank you so much for watching and definitely go check out Palette Gear over at their website. There's a link right here in the description. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.